that you're here today. I, I, I pray that today is a blessing to you. Um, you know, today's going to be a little bit different than our normal teaching. Um, as you can tell, there's some weird things going on here. Um, but today, you're going to be quadruply blessed because we're going to have uh, an elder roundtable this morning. We, we've concluded our series on the Holy Spirit. There's never enough learning as it comes to the Holy Spirit. As Steve Pope said, he's out of town today, uh, he and Terry with Terry's father. But he told me this week, he said, listen, God is unsearchable, so we'll never learn enough. And I thought that was mature. It's mature to know that you'll never mature. And, and he's unsearchable. And so we'll always learn about the Holy Spirit, even though this series has come to its conclusion. But uh, we felt that it would be good for us to get up here in a discussion-type format and help you guys. If you have um, answers maybe to some questions you may have or, or give you some key points to focus on, um, but also to, to challenge you all to take next steps in your faith, because faith is an action word. It's a, it's a verb. Faith is, is about moving forward. We talked about you can't be stagnant in the kingdom of God. If you stay still in the kingdom of God, then you're regressing, right? So you're either regressing in your faith or you're moving forward in your faith. And so we're going to challenge you today in our discussion type format uh, to take that next step and, 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 and be challenged to, to move forward in your faith as it pertains to God and the Holy Spirit. So if you will, join with me for just a moment in welcoming our elders to the stage, uh, Joe McClanahan, Mike Gomez, and Mike Lowe. So this is a little different than, than what you're used to seeing, uh, just me getting up here waving my hands and talking a lot. Uh, but we do have an outline, I promise. This won't be five hours looking at us. Uh, we, we will be uh, on time. It will be as, uh, about what our normal service is. Um, but these are our elders, Mike Lowe, uh, Joe McClanahan, Mike Gomez, myself. And uh, we want you to know that some of the things that you felt throughout this series are some of the things that we felt throughout this series. Um, that some of the things that you're dealing with personally in your faith walk are the things that we're dealing with in our faith walk. Uh, we're hoping that we have a lot of fun today. Um, looking at, if you're out there, you're looking up at us here, we might look familiar. This might look like the blue collar comedy tour, amen? <laughs> I don't know which one's, a, it's Tater Salad or, or Larry the Cable Guy. I know which one's the good looking one, I'm just saying. But uh, we're hoping we have a lot of fun today, and we hope, again, uh, that we answer some of your questions that you may have. Uh, we're going to start with our outline uh, on, on something that we want to call aha moments. Uh, the subject of uh, a Holy Spirit, it can be a difficult one to teach. Um, it can be a difficult one to sit out there and listen to sometimes. Uh, but I want to say that we're just overwhelmed. Um, we're elated. I'm elated to see how the Holy Spirit has worked in us and how God has revealed some things to us through the Spirit or through the series. Um, but I'm sure that each of you throughout this series had a, a time or a moment where you had an aha moment, where something, a revelation hits your brain. I know that we had aha moments as well, some kind of a, a epiphany that, that hit us. An aha moment is like the first time when you realize something. Uh, you, you've seen it a hundred times, you've gone by it, you've had a relationship and you've seen it for the first... An aha moment is like this. This is an aha moment. It's like when you, you're driving by Target and you look up and you see their sign you go... Aha! It's a bullseye! It's a target! You've driven by Target a hundred times, and then one day, one day Amy Carnes, you realized that, <laughs> that that's a target sign for Target. Aha! Y'all get it? Okay, good. Uh, so an aha moment is, is when you realize something like that. So guys, I'm sure that y'all have had a revelation throughout the series, but to us up here, I'm sure that we had aha moments as well. So... Um, However you'd like to share, what, what's an aha moment that you, you guys might have had? We're going to start on this side. Sure, go ahead. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, so it's so good to be here. Uh, I know I've missed a lot lately, but uh, we've been blessed and we're back. So uh, one of the aha moments I had was uh, just this, this continuing revelation. And I think as we get closer to God and closer to His Word, uh, we just start realizing things that we, we, just, we knew but we didn't know. My aha moment, uh, my first one, and I've got 300, is, uh, <laughs> so yeah, if you think you're going to be here for Dallas, if you're going to get home for Dallas plays again, yeah, I don't know. It's, they played last night. I know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, it was, it was that, that Jesus gave us so much more than we realized. 
And my first aha moment in that was, was Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I always knew him as my Savior, but until I started understanding him as my Lord, my life wasn't complete. Still working on that, but nevertheless, it is that revelation that he's more than, than, than we can really even imagine. The aha moment in this with the, 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 the Holy Spirit was he gave us that as well. If you'll remember, he said, I'm going to have to leave you. I'm going to go away and prepare a place, right? But he also said, I'll never leave you. I'll always be with you, right? That's two different things, isn't it? Well, in our flesh, in our minds, it is two different things. But he revealed the truth to us, didn't he? Because what did he tell us? That he would send a comforter. That he would send a helper, the Holy Spirit, to come and help us, to inspire us, to make us whole, to be there for us, that he would always be there with us. And how is that confirmed? Paul told the church in Colossia, didn't he? The great mystery revealed. It's Christ in us, the hope of glory. If it was just, I'm going to go prepare, prepare a place, that's the hope of glory. He didn't end it with that. Christ in us. And who told Paul that? The Holy Spirit. So that was great revelation for me. So now I can always count on the Holy Spirit to be there. And I count on him all the time. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but it's, he's in my mind the whole time. Help me with this. Help me make this decision. Help me to, to see you in all things. And so that was my first revelation in this series. And I'm just, I just feel blessed. Um, aha moments. Um, I'm a, no, no. I'm, a, I'm, I'm an overthinker. Um, I saw, I'm going to admit this in public, I can't believe it. <clears throat> I saw on Pinterest yesterday. <clears throat> <laughs> okay, we know which one's Larry the Cable Guy. <laughs> <laughs> I saw, literally, I did. On, on Pinterest, I saw a t-shirt. And it said, wait a minute, let me overthink that. Y'all seen that? That's me. I get it. That totally fits me. I'm going to have to get that. I may end up with 10 or 12 of them before this is over. But uh, I do overthink things, and I think my aha, one of my aha moments, I'm like Mike, there was 300 of them, but one of the aha moments was, this isn't as hard as I'm making it. This isn't nearly as complicated. Now, the Holy Spirit is deep, and he wants to take us into the deeper things of God as we grow and mature, but he's not complicated in that he can't be understood or comprehended. He, he, he's... It's really pretty simple, and I love, I absolutely love, I actually laughed at kind of the way Trent started teaching us. And that was, hey, everyone, we're going to speak on the Holy Spirit. Did you know he's a part of the triune, the trinity? He's God. Did y'all know that? Simple. I like that. I actually love that. He went on to say, I think the next week after he talked about how the Spirit was God, he said, this Spirit is not an it, it's a person. Wow, simple. The next week, he is on your side. The Holy Spirit loves you. I have, I've forgotten that. I'm not sure I was ever taught that. I know Jesus loved me. He died on the cross for me. I know Jesus loved me. He went back to the Father to make a place for me. I know Jesus loved me because he went back and told, asked the Father to send the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, to me. That's about as far as my understanding went. I never was taught what the Holy Spirit was about. But I found out that the Holy Spirit loves me, just like Jesus loves me. The Holy Spirit and Jesus and God, they're all one. Okay? The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Simple. Not really. That gets a little tricky when you start trying. I saw it uh, again. I think it was on Pinterest. I'm out. It's okay. <clears throat> it was a triangle. It was a picture. I'm a person. I, I, I see things in pictures. I understand things in pictures. And I saw a picture of a triangle. And you've probably all seen, you may have seen the same Pinterest page I did. But it, it was a triangle. And at the top was the Father. Off to one side was the Son. And off to the other side was the Holy Spirit. Okay? Pretty easy, right? Okay, yeah, yeah, this is, it can be interactive. <laughs> so we got the Father, the, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in this triangle, and there was a line connecting each one. And that line had written on it the word is not on each line, saying that the Father is not the Son. 
The Father is not the Spirit. The Spirit is not the Son. Okay, you with me so far? But in the middle of that triangle was a circle. Okay, we've got the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. In the circle, we see the word God. Okay, you begin to get the picture. All three make up the Godhead, the triune God, the Trinity. And there was another set of lines going from each, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, to the word God. And the word was written, is. Okay, you see it now? The Holy Spirit is God. The Son is God. The Father is God. That just made it easy for me to understand a little bit better what the Trinity was all about. It also helped me understand that the Spirit, even though I'd never been taught about it, I knew about the Father and the Son, but the Spirit was also a part of that Godhead. And it, it's meaningful. Quite frankly, I always thought that I, Jesus did so much for me, and I was taught that I needed to accept Jesus as Savior and Lord, and he was the focus, but when, it, when I get down to it, I, don't, I realize that Jesus isn't here. It's the Spirit that's here. The Spirit lives within me. That's how I relate to God. It's through the Spirit, and I have been all along. So I guess in some ways, the aha moment for me was, was it's simple, stupid. Okay? Last night, um, I watched a movie. Some of you may have seen it. It's called The Crudes. I see it, yeah. Yeah. Um, and what Trent's saying is it fits so well with, uh, with what I saw last night. Uh, the Crudes is, is a story about cave, cave men, cave people. And it's a family of, of cave dwellers. Uh, all of their friends are gone because they've been squished by dinosaurs or carried off by pterodactyls or eaten by serpents. And so they're really the only ones alive. And, and the reason they're alive is because uh, f the father of the group, what's his name? Is it Grunk? Nobody wants to admit it. Grug? Anyway, that guy was credited with the family still existing because all he wanted to do was be afraid. Always be afraid. Never not be afraid is what he kept saying over and over and over. And so they would hold up in the cave day and night, day and night for three or four days at a time. They go out and get very little food. They fought for their food. Then they go back to the cave. And that's the way they stay alive. That's the way they survived. And that's, that was life. And through the story, a young man comes into, the, in, in, into their midst, someone they didn't know about, shows up, and begins to teach them that there's something beyond that cave and that darkness. And by the end of this, the, 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 the movie, uh, the father had learned that there was light beyond the darkness of the cave. And instead of never not being afraid, never be afraid is the way he his mindset changed and I'm not saying God did that I'm thinking the creators at Disney did that but the story is still very very easy to apply we can be held up in the cave and comfortable surviving but there's so much more for us that the light is out there so don't be afraid I used to be afraid because I didn't know about who who the spirit was and what he did now I understand a little bit more because of this series and uh and, and, and the love that he has for me, I begin to trust him more and allow him to push me outside that cave a little bit. It's scary out there, but it's okay. It's okay because he's with us. What's that called? A freebie? <laughs> as far as emotions, you know, I had similar emotions to what Trent had. Um, many years ago, 12, 13 years ago, I guess it was, I'd been serving in a little Baptist church for 23 years, a leader in that church for most of those years, and uh, um, things were changing. We were in a transition, and some of the new teaching that was coming along uh, was things like uh, freedom in Christ. You know, we teach that here every day, or every week anyway, and we try to live it every day, but, but it was new back then. Let me give you a uh, for, for example. I used to think that eternal life that God gives me through Jesus Christ and my faith in him, I thought eternal life began the moment I died. Really. I didn't experience eternal life because that's something out in the future. And I had to die first before eternal life. Heaven, basically, was there. And then through this process of transition and some new teaching and some new eyes, 
in understanding or interpretation of scriptures in a little different way than what I grew up with and what I actually taught for those 20 some odd years. I, I began to realize that uh, uh, eternal life, I'm an eternal being, I always have been. The moment God thought of me, I came into existence and that was far before the world was even, even built and born. Uh, I'm an eternal being as I walk through this life and I will be and continue to be, I'm gonna hit you, I will be an eternal being, eternal life. So I'm already living eternal life. And you know what happened to me? I got freedom. I wasn't scared of dying anymore. Now, I'm not interested in doing it. And we don't have to rush it. <clears throat> but honestly, I had a whole new perspective on what eternal life was and what death was all about. And death doesn't scare me anymore. Because I know, as Paul, as Paul speaks, to die is, is to gain. And, 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 and so those are the types of things. It was just turning some of the things we'd learned all our lives upside down. And it was scary for a lot of folks. And a lot of folks left. Well, a dear man and his wife were a part of that church. And, and he actually was older than me. And he was a, he's a, he's a wonderful man. I love, I love him to death. Not literally. But I love him in a way that a son loves his father. And this man mentored me. He taught me so much. He lived a life. That was a great example, and, and he said one day that uh, it was time uh, for them to leave. Many, else, many others had left. Breaking our hearts is painful, but this one hit home. This was a lot harder than the others. I don't know if that really makes sense, but uh, and, and, and what was happening is we were beginning to do something and start talking about the Holy Spirit, and it was just uncomfortable, and I just believe they left because that they, they, they felt like at some point we're going to turn that church into a very Pentecostal, tongue-speaking, laying-in-the-floor healing service every week. And that's not what, what we were going to do at all. We're just going to let... We were going to do what Trent's done the last several weeks in this series. We're just going to share the truth from the authority, God's Word. And uh, so it didn't have to be scary. But anyway, it broke my heart that they were going to leave. And I decided God had shown me some things shared with me some truths, um, reasons for not being afraid of the Holy Spirit and what the Spirit would, might do through specifically gifts and tongues. And so I was going to go to this gentleman's office. I actually set up an appointment, went by, and I was going to tell him, don't be afraid. You don't have to leave. This stuff is real. This is real. Take a hold of it. Believe it. You know, this preacher is not as crazy as you might seem to think he is on these subjects. And I was going to convince my mentor, to stay. Um, I pulled up in the parking lot. I, uh, before I got out of my truck, before I even reached for the door handle, God impressed upon me at that moment. Mike, you can tell him three things. I can remember this just like today. it was today. You can tell him three things. First of all, you can tell him you love him. Now listen, I was ready to tell him that gifts of the Spirit are real. Don't run away. You need them. We need them. Our church needs them. But he said, you can tell him you love him. You can tell him that you appreciate so much the friendship that you guys have had and, and all that he's taught you over the years. And lastly, you can tell him that you are praying for him because you know that the Spirit of God will lead him wherever he wants him to be in any church in Lubbock that he wants to go to. That was... That was the final for me in that I knew at that moment they're leaving. They're not coming back. They're going to go find another church. I've lost a dear friend, not in the sense of friendship, but in the sense of one who serves together at church. And that hurt deeply because what I wanted to share with him was about the Spirit and what the Spirit was doing. And God closed, wouldn't let me share that. And so I just obeyed what God said, and I, sh I shared those three things. Um, and like I said, they did leave. Usually when people say we're going to leave, you know, they've already let that thought enter, enter their mind. It's kind of like in a marriage. If you let divorce enter your mind as an option, man, you're, your marriage is in trouble. You need to figure out how to get that word out of that vocabulary. It doesn't belong there, not in a marriage. Uh, but in this situation, uh, they left, and it, and it hurt, and it's hurt for a long time. So my biggest fear the emotional concern that I have as we talked about whether or not we should go into this was I was afraid that you would leave. I was wrong. 
I didn't trust you enough, I guess. I'm sorry for that. Because you are trustworthy. I'm, th I'm thankful you're here. But that was my biggest fear. My emotional concern was that you, were got, you guys were going to leave. Because even though it might look like it, that we're trying to build a church here, um, and as a leader, um, I think I even get caught in a situation where trying to build a church is the focus. But that's really not what it's about. It's about you. It's about the people. It's about my love for you and your love for me and us working together. Not that we're in this together. I'm looking at my notes because I actually wrote this down in a certain way. This is, I'm going to share this in a minute. Okay, so y'all just hold on to that. We are in this together. But uh, I want to add to that here in a little bit. That was the emotion that I went through. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so I'm sure that all of us had emotions throughout this series. Now, we're not going to stand up one by one, but we want you to know that you're not alone. And if you want to talk about any of these things, that we're here for you. We'd love to talk to you about it. Um, if you're ready to take that next step uh, of faith, then we're here for, for you in that as well. Uh, if it's salvation, then, then we'd be glad to, to work with you towards salvation. And then enter into that first baptism, the baptism of us into the body of Christ. If you're ready to take the second baptism, that's the baptism of water baptism, immersion. Um, man, we, we'll get the tub ready today. Simple. It, it just, uh, it might not be hot, uh, but we'll get the tub ready for you today. And if you're like Julia, you'll float a little bit. That was fun. Um, but uh, the third baptism, if you're ready for the third baptism, then the baptism of the Holy Spirit, then we'd be glad to lay hands on you that you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and that you'd be filled with the Holy Spirit. If you're ready for that next step of faith, we want to challenge you to take those next steps. With baptism comes the gifts of the Spirit, and that scares a lot of people. Um, more emotions. I, I love how Mike said, you really don't have to let the emotions take over. You just have to let the Spirit take, take over. And uh, if, if you want to see those in your life, uh, I think Paul said something very clear that we, would, we should desire to see those things. I'm going to list these uh, spiritual gifts real quick, and then we're going to talk about uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit and, and those gifts for just a moment. Uh, the gifts of the Spirit are a word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, gifts of healings, miracles, prophecy, discerning between spirits, tongues, interpretation of tongues, serving, teaching, exhorting, giving, leadership, and mercy. Paul said that we should, number one, pursue love. But then Paul went on to say, and desire gifts. You know, we'll listen to the Apostle Paul on a lot of stuff, but I don't know why we decided to not listen to him on a few things. Um, it's ragu, baby. It's in there. Yeah. And if it's in there, we need to take it to heart. And Paul said, pursue love. we got to get that. But then desire gifts. Um, desire gifts. And so let's talk about that. Do you all have anything you'd like to, to talk about uh, when it comes to the baptism or, or pursuing gifts? And just jump in. You, about us, right? no, you guys, not nothing. <laughs> This probably fits more into the aha category, but it also fits into this idea as we speak about specifically the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, one of the things that I think I've discovered through this whole process um, and through the learning is um, that we, we, you and I, us, are far more dependent on one another than we might realize. We collectively are stronger in our diversity, being different, than we are all looking the same and kind of going at this alone. Or we may be in the same room, but alone attacking some of these issues of life, the things that, that are coming at us. And <clears throat> when I looked at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 13, and 14, where it talks about gifts, 13 is about love, 14 is about gifts, it's all about the Spirit. Uh, but Paul was actually chastising the church at Corinth, saying, hey, you guys are messing up. You guys all have all these wonderful gifts, and they're all for you, for, for you to benefit from, but yet you're, you're using them in a the wrong way. And you're hurting each other in the process. And uh, 
I've always looked through chapter 12 where it talks about gifts. You know, it starts out talking about the body and how we are all members of the same body, but yet we're all different parts of that same body. So we're individual and distinct, but yet we are one. It's kind of like that triangle almost that I shared earlier where uh, we're, I'm not you and you're not me. Whereas the line said is not. You is not me and I is not you. Uh, neither of us are God, but we're all working alongside together in, in this together. It's not, al- we're not alone. And, and there's, a, there's great comfort to be found in knowing that you're not alone. Um, I've, I've met people that are lonely, and it's sad. Uh, life is kind of like, I can't get the guy's name, but Grunk in the cave. It's pretty lonely and isolated and scary and uh, and, and, and I, I take a lot of uh, comfort in knowing that we're not in this alone um, I always read through these these different chapters about these are the gifts and Paul was saying here's how you use them you know it's like an instruction manual and you know us guys we don't need no stinking instructions so <laughs> so we just get after it <clears throat> and we make a mess of it and we have to back up and redo it and undo it and do all those things. And whether it's a piece of Ikea furniture or it's the gifts of the Spirit, it seems to be the same way. Um, but um, as we move out of chapter 12, talking about the different members of the body getting different gifts according to the way the Spirit wants to give them and move into this more excellent way called love and then moving on into Basically, the opportunity to say you're using your gifts wrong because chapter 13, 14 is about uh, how they were using the gifts wrong publicly. And um, I glossed over that idea in the first chapter or in the 12th chapter where it talks about uh, we're all members of the same body. I thought the gifts were for us, for me. I want the gifts. I'm supposed to desire the gifts. It's it's me. It's for me. God saved me. God loves me. God wants to give me gifts. But I glossed over it so much that I forgot that he gave me the gifts, not for me, but for you. Whatever gifts I have, they're yours. And I want to freely share them with you. Whatever gifts you have, I need. Don't hold back. Love me by desiring gifts and letting God give you the gifts so that you can use those gifts to bless me or the person next to you, your, your spouse, your children, your friends, your other, your, your fellow church mates because the gifts are not for us specifically. Oh, we get blessed in it. When we go do something good for somebody, don't we get blessed oftentimes as much as the blessing we're giving? Sure we did. Same way with the gifts. We get blessed by having those gifts, but they're really not for us. They're for others. And that's something that, like I said, is an aha moment for me. We are far more dependent on one another than we ever really realized. And I haven't figured it all out, but I'm so happy. I'm so thankful that God's begun to open the door a little bit and let some light in on that so, so that I can, 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 can understand that the gifts are for you. And I want them to bless you. And that's another thing that when we talk about emotions, I didn't want to run you off. I didn't want you to leave. But I don't want to scare you or frustrate you or feel, make you feel like you have to earn or, or do something. You know, I don't want to put an awkward situation on you. I thought the Spirit used to do that to me. I learned that he doesn't. I don't want to do that to you either. But I do want to encourage you to go seeking those gifts. If you've never sat down with God alone and said, God, I, I don't understand this stuff, but I'd sure like to know what you want from me, do it. Do it. I need it. And I'm not trying to put a guilt trip on you. I think you love me whether you come to me with your, your gifts or not. I'm not talking about presents. You know what I mean. I'm talking about these spiritual things. Um, are we going to get to where we get to share some experiences? Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Real quick. The best way for me to share with you just what I was talking about is uh, many, many years ago, I was walking through the mall. And I've shared this with several people. Um, I was walking through the mall. I was in the food court. Nasty stuff. And, and I saw as I was walking through it, I wasn't stopping to do anything there. I was just walking probably, I think, to Sears at the time. 
and tools, craftsman tools, back section. Um, but as I was walking through, I noticed a gentleman sitting at one of the tables by himself. Um, he was alone, by himself. Uh, he was in a wheelchair. He, um, he had a cap on. I'm pretty sure it was a veteran's cap because I remember in my mind that this gentleman was a veteran. And I thought as I rushed through there that he probably was in that wheelchair because of his service. And I distinctly at that moment felt God say, go speak to him. Go pray with him. Go sh j he needs healing. It's what I thought I heard God say. You need to go pray for his healing. Um, man, <laughs> that's awkward. That's scary. I kept walking. For years after that, I felt guilty and ashamed. What kind of a Christian are you? You don't care enough to go pray for a veteran who's lost his ability to walk serving you in this country? For years, I felt guilt. And then God began to open up my heart. About 12 years ago, learning about the Holy Spirit, he began to share with me that if he wanted to heal that man, he would do it. It doesn't require me. I can't heal a thing. I can put a Band-Aid on it, then I can hope it heals. But <clears throat> it didn't completely lift the guilt and shame. I felt sorry for the guy because I didn't have enough boldness. I was too timid to go talk to him. Well, earlier last year, a dear friend of mine and I were talking about different spiritual things, and she, she said, I have a word for you. I believe it's a word from God. And would you allow me to share it? And I said, absolutely, I want to hear it. And she said, and she started giggling and laughing a little bit. She said, I'm getting this picture. God is sharing this picture with me of you. She said, it, I'm seeing this picture of a mouse. Well, this is getting good. A mouse with really, really big ears. Y'all have a picture of that in your mind? I'm talking about a mouse that has ears that's twice the size of its body big-eared mouth. She says, that's the picture that God's given me of you. And I'm like, man, what am I going to do with this? You know, God looks at me as some freaky-looking rodent. <laughs> and she, she didn't stop. Thank God she didn't stop. She says, I think what it means, I think the interpretation is you can hear God. But you're timid, like a mouse. You're small in stature. You're afraid that what you're hearing isn't really from God. You're afraid to share what you're hearing. I want to tell you, her words spoken over me took the guilt and the shame and threw it out the window. Because that fit my story walking through the mall and that man in the wheelchair. I heard God, but I was timid. God had released me from the actual guilt of it, but I still felt some of it. But she threw that word from God. That's what I'm talking about. We're dependent on each other. I needed her word to give me some freedom in that. Now, it didn't consume me. It didn't direct every, everything that I do. But it was always there. I'm free of that. And I'm excited about that. And I want to do those kinds of things for you. When you're, when you're bound up and when you're getting beat up by the world, and you feel guilty and ashamed, I want you to, I want you to know that's not God. It's not meant for you. God has good plans for you. Um, I learned a long time ago, thankfully, that the truth will do something for me. Can y'all tell me what that is? What will the truth do for you? Set you free. Okay? But I'm a thinker, remember? The shirt. Not the simple shirt, the one that says, let me overthink this for a minute. If you turn that around, if you're bound up and you're imprisoned and you're caught, trapped, shamed, and being beaten up, then you're believing a lie. Does, it, does that make sense? Same thing, same idea. Freedom sets you, or truth sets you free. Lies will imprison you. Okay? I believed a lot of lies about the Holy Spirit that imprisoned and stopped me from being able to understand or to accept or to receive what, what the truths were about the, the Spirit. But once the truths push away those lies, then all of a sudden what comes? Freedom.
for me, you know, saying that I'm a Christian, saying I'm a Christian, you know, going to church on Sunday morning, it's one thing to say something, it's a different thing to display something, right? And the power through the gifts of the Holy Spirit, it empowers us to display God for others to see. That word that was spoken over him, that was an opportunity for God to display who he is. That he's kind, he's gentle, he's loving, he's releasing them, he's releasing him of, of fear and of guilt and shame. Um, what Mike said about gifts, how it is a gift, it's nothing that's earned, nothing that's deserved. Man, that's got to be good. Amen. I mean, there's nothing that you have to do in your own power to deserve the gift. Because if that was the case, then we're giftless. Amen. But it's all about Him. And it's, and it's all for each other. So, I can say the right things to prove I'm a Christian. But the gift of wisdom from God will display Christ in me, the hope of glory. And so that's what we want to do. We want to desire gifts to, to put God on display for all. And so we're going to talk through a, a couple personal experiences if we have them. But, you know, church, we're wrapping it up. And what I earnestly want us to, to, to do as, as a leadership team, but as a church, is I want us to earnestly desire um, to provoke us to take a deeper look into our faith. I mean, think about that, where you're at right now, this morning. When's the last time you sat down with God and said, Lord, I want to go deeper. Lord, I want to search more. Lord, I want more of you and less of me. I want us to provoke you this morning to that desire. That's our challenge this morning, to, to dive deeper in your faith walk. Remember, faith is an action word. There's more to God than you've already experienced. Amen? He's unsearchable, as Steve said. There's always more to learn. And there's more to God than you've already experienced. And if you want more, then the answer is to take that next step forward in your faith. So our challenge is this. Simple. Pursue love. Desire gifts. Why? So we can better serve one another. Pursue love. Desire gifts. So we can better serve one another. I found it. It's not nearly as good as I thought it was. <laughs> what I wrote down, it was meaningful me at, for me at the time, and I'm going to go ahead and share it because it's, I made a big deal out of it. But it's, it's not that we're in this together. We are. But it's not, it's not that kind of mindset we should have. The mindset, the mindset we should have is we need each other in this. And so that would be the encouragement. Change your mindset. We need each other in this. Not that we're in this together. Because that would indicate that we're all each working alone, trying to achieve or accomplish something, as opposed to, to working with each other, for each other. Another, another thing I wanted to share, just real quick, is this, this gentleman in the wheelchair. When, 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 when this lady shared um, this, this word, or this picture for me, it helped me understand who I was. I said it brought freedom. Uh, I'd failed. I really felt like I'd failed. God and that gentleman. And uh, it brought me freedom. Um, but I, God didn't say this, but I just felt it, if that makes any sense. And that is the next time, Mike, you're in the mall and you're walking through the food court, if I ask you and you hear me, there's going to be somebody with you. Somebody that has boldness. They can't hear quite as well as you can. But they have the boldness that you don't have. And together, you can go share. Together, you can work together uh, to, to, to whatever God's calling you to do. I'm saying, church, we all together, equipped with gifts and pursuing that love that's talked about, we can't be stopped. We will overcome the world. Amen. Last thing, and then we'll dismiss uh, without uh, another praise set. We went a little long. One of us went a little long, and uh, <laughs> so uh, it, it's okay. He overthinks it. Um, no, we, we do. We hope that you were blessed today. Listen, when Jesus walked on the earth, he, the Bible says he was the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He was the body of Christ. As he walked on this earth, that's what he was. And we didn't listen. We didn't think it odd 
that he did miracles. We, didn't think it, we don't think it odd that he did miracles, do we? We don't think it odd that he had Jesus had supernatural faith. We don't think it weird that Jesus healed people or he messed up funerals or, or that he could discern spirits. He, he, he told spirits to come out of a man and jump into a herd of swine off a cliff. We didn't think that weird. We don't think it's strange that, he, that Jesus exhibited all wisdom and all knowledge from God or that, listen, that Jesus would prophesy. We don't think it weird that Jesus would, would say that the temple would be torn down and three days later God will raise it again. We didn't think that that's strange or odd or weird. Why would we? He was God, amen? amen? We didn't think it odd when Jesus did that. Listen, likewise, church, we shouldn't think it odd or weird or strange that we now, the body of Christ with the Holy Spirit, could do the things that Jesus has done and even greater Things. Amen. Amen. Don't think it's strange, but pursue of desire gifts and stretch your faith. Amen. Why? Because God made it so in Jesus. Let's give God praise for that. Amen. Amen.